develop some expertise in materials development and curriculum development. Trying to think about what's helped me during this process. Um, maybe some of this will resonate with you as well. Obviously, my formal education has really helped me um, in the materials development and the curriculum development work that I've had to do. So you can see my career pro progression. But what I would say that has been the most influential formal education for me is the Delta and then my PhD because my PhD was very directly focused on materials development and curriculum design. Um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about is I've been obviously a teacher, a course coordinator and now I'm in a position of being an interim uh, centre director as well. So all of these involve me needing to develop some expertise in uh, materials or curriculum development. So for, as a teacher, when I really started teaching, I started teaching at the British Council in Hong Kong. Um, before that, actually, I was teaching in Slovakia, um, just at a private language school. And these are the two things that I really struggled with. Um, uh, it's how to target uh, the needs of students at the level of understanding that they're at. Certainly at the British Council, I was teaching students of all uh, abilities, from beginner to advanced, and switching from one to the other, and for me that was a really good experience trying to develop a sensitivity to the needs of the students. And the second one was developing materials that really increase student engagement, so very much I think what Chrissy was talking about as well, is how can I create materials that can motivate people, exactly what you were talking about as well. How can I get, uh, how can I develop materials that are going to excite my students and going to get, get them involved. So obviously my formal experience, that experience at the British Council helped and just con conscious reflection and trying to improve the materials. The second time I taught them, the third time I taught them, not um, staying uh, in the same place, teaching the same materials time and time again. Okay, uh, then I moved to Hong Kong U and I became a course coordinator. And uh, I uh, led a team to develop the materials for our large first year general English for academic purposes course. So this was taken at that time by over 3,000 students. It's a little bit less now. And the two things that really uh, preoccupied, well, sorry, the one thing that really, was really preoccupying me at that time was how to develop materials which are well aligned with the students' needs in the curriculum. So I, I was forced to step out of my role as the teacher and into a role as a curriculum designer. And these first year students, they were taking the new four year curriculum and they were doing at Hong Kong U what we call the Common Core Curriculum. So um, how, do I, how did I tackle that? Well I started a PhD and I decided to try to work on this question in my PhD. So to try to really directly relate my work to my research as well. So I study, I try to study the student's curriculum and that's what that, my PhD was about. Looking at this common core curriculum, what were the students doing in it? What were the, what were the assignments that they were needing to complete? What kind of text were they reading? And um, to try to identify learning outcomes which would be likely to have the most impact. So um, this is just one example of part of my research analysing the assessment text types of the Common Core curriculum. So you can see um, the most common uh, spoken text types in the Common Core curriculum were uh, tutorial discussions and oral presentations. So many of our other courses were focused on oral presentations, so therefore we decided to teach tutorial discussion skills in this first year course. And then we focused on essays and reports because these, these were the two most common genres. So this is really what I, how I felt I tried to develop some expertise here to align what we were teaching in this course with the students' curriculum. And I find that as teachers we need to go outside of our centres and really explore what is happening in the wider curriculum for us to really make an impact because I think we can do a lot in our courses to remind students you're learning this in this course. Don't forget you're going to need to do this in this other course that you're going to be taking and in this other time.
type of writing that you're doing. So I find that that's very helpful. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on the other one because that's probably, uh, I think only Keith has Keith's experience in this room here. But you might like to hear what I'm challenged by at the moment as a centre director. Because then I need to move not only to my own course, but also the whole centre as well. So um, at the centre we teach, oh actually that should be 31, not 21 undergraduate courses. We have two postgraduate programs. We have a range of other services like one-to-one uh, -one support for students as well. So these are the things that are pre preoccupying my mind as well, which is still curriculum development which is how can I make decisions about strategic developments for the centre and how can I provide leadership for these to be successful as well. And so these involve many things that your centre director I'm sure is, is doing as well. Trying to create shared strategic vision with all, this, with all the, the teachers in the centre. Um, sell that strategic vision up the chain of command at the university provide support in the form of time, administration, training, incentives for teachers also. And um, to publicly recognise the achievements of all, of all of the teachers in the centre as well. So this is what we do at the centre. So for example at CAS at the moment we're really focusing on the yellow, how we can expand the services that we offer one-to-one -one for students. Uh, in our writing centre, our digital literacy lab and our speaking studio. We're also trying to uh, develop some expertise in experiential learning as well. Okay, so uh, just as a summary, these are the things that have preoccupied me um, at all range, at all levels, as a teacher, a centre director and a course coordinator, meeting varying needs of students, addressing various perspectives of, of stakeholders, so what students want is not necessarily also what, or always what teachers want to teach, for example. Um, utilising meaningful quality assurance data. How can we use quality assurance data to make decisions and to improve the materials that we have? Staying pedagogically up to date and aligning development of the university with the university curriculum. Okay, that's it. Thank you.